Hello, world. It's Eustace Farmer. And hello, Duck Zorley. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to bite you. <laughs> so I figure we got six people. That's probably among the biggest crowd I'm going to generate until Duck Zorley drops out in about five minutes, and then I'll have five people. <laughs> so today, this was a little uh, impromptu, and I have been working on um, the Ravenport map. I converted it into a mod map. And then I kind of converted a couple other things from 17 to add into the map to give it a little Flava Flav. <laughs> so um, that's what I've been doing. And I thought I would just show you guys a little bit of the stuff that I tinker around with off camera. There's really never a day that goes by that I don't do something with this game. So I'm either tinkering with a mod or a map or sometimes just playing it off cam, but most of the time I'm fooling around with, you know, trying to fix things, rearrange things. That's just the kind of person that I am. <laughs> That's not my desktop. Here, I'll show you my desktop. You're just being nosy, but I'll show you. There's my desktop, as you would expect, right? The big old EP logo. Logo, yeah. Logo. <laughs> Take them apples, Zorley. Okay, so what have I been doing? Let me show you over here in GE. And I know there's a delay, but I'm just going to wait until I see it on the screen so I know that you guys can see it. There it goes. All right, so we'll just kind of set Duck Zorley aside with a lollipop and we'll move on here. <laughs> you got to kind of sit him down in the corner and uh, he'll cheer up once he gets his nappy changed. All right, so there was um, a few things that really bugged me about this map. More than a few things, but there's only really a few things that I can really address myself. As I'm sure you've all heard, in the modding community, um, modding in FS19 is a bit more difficult than it was in the past because there's been so many changes. And even some of the longtime pros like Bullet Bill and Oxygen David and those folks, and even my friend CCS101, they're finding things difficult and things are taking longer to do and complete than before because there's a learning curve and they have to try to figure things out as they run into them. And sometimes some things you just never figure out. And, um, <laughs> I guess that's one of the things you have to, uh, determine when you start into a project is how far can you go? Can you finish it? And will it work right when you're done? <laughs> so one thing that I've noticed here is, and this was pretty much the same in FS 17, but if you want to take Ravenport and come and make a whole nother map out of it, um, the average person is going to be out of luck because all these roads and everything like this, they're all locked together in a navigation mesh. So you have to bring this into blender and take them apart piece by piece. And, um, that was something that I asked, um, my friend Bula Bill about. And, uh, when he told me that I was like, Oh, nuts. And um, I also was talking to CCS 101 about it, and he pretty much confirmed the same thing. So you're better off kind of getting a starter map or making a starter map out of this and uh, going from there. An empty slate, if you will. All right, so let's see. What can I show you first that I've been tinkering around with here? There's some things over in the left there that I'm not going to show you until we go into game because uh, I don't know. I, I, I like it, and I'm proud of it, but you guys are going to probably be like, oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's see. So, basically what I've done here is I've removed all the trash, and I've got a video coming about that, so I'm not going to get on my soapbox with all that, but I removed all the trash from the game. And, um, I mean, I left some things. You know, I don't mind some rust and some, you know, the look of a patina or a neglect a little bit. 
when appropriate, but when it's overdone, it's ridiculous. So I took away most of the trash and I left some in areas where I think, well, you might find it there. <laughs> okay. So just a sound check, if anybody wouldn't mind, um, I hope that you hear me. Please let me know if you hear me. Yes, do as Duck Zorley says. And I never ever say that, but in this instance, yes, please, do as Duck Zorley instructs. <laughs> uh, so the first thing is a minor change here. Um, I don't know about you guys. Maybe it's just me. Zorley's going to say it's just me. But every time I drive down this road with a tractor, I always hit these stinking barriers. And uh, sometimes you can get a little jumbled up and stuck. And then, uh, you know, a little backwards and forwards and a little bit of naughty words and off you go. So I decided to push these back a bit. So that's pretty much all I did with that. <laughs> the map the map is done. <laughs> but over here, I've done things like this here. So this mountain before to me was kind of useless. And, um, you know, you have this road that comes all the way up here and then you're greeted with a car and a radio tower and uh, some little kind of hut over here. And then it goes back down the other side in a rather steep fashion. I mean, you'd have to have a toboggan to really get down there. But uh, I decided to make use of this space a little bit better. So I made this whole area here. And uh, let me see if I can get you a better view. And uh, put the mountain rock all around it. I, I nabbed some rocks off of the mountains back there and uh, shoved those into place here. And made a nice area up here. And this is probably where I'm going to have uh, my house. So... What I have done with all the spaces that I've created is I've put grass down as the um, the texture of choice because when you're in game and you're editing with the terrain editor, grass is one thing that you can't get back if you delete it unless you plow and seed it again. So I decided to put it all with grass and then you can uh, decide what you want to do with it. You might want to leave it like this, create a new field up here, make it a little grassy knoll, and have some uh, mowing up here and looking at the view. and uh, Or put your sheep up here. Whatever you want to do. Now, I will say that when you use these rocks, it seems like they have a little bit more of a collision than should be there in general. And that's because when you're pushing them into the hillside, th some of the placeables will still detect it even though it's under the surface. So I use a mod called place anywhere and that's on github and i'll leave a link down in the description at the end of the stream so you can go get it yourself and it does just what it says i've got the latest version version 1.3 and uh oh thank you very much uh rockhound and mr zorley thank you <laughs> um you can place the mod anywhere so if giants game says oh it doesn't it can't go here well this mod says it can't so uh Definitely use that. It's really good. So let's see what else I can show you over here. And if I'm breathing into the microphone, I'm sorry. I <laughs> I just hauled in four massive bottles of water. The water delivery guy was here, and I'm out of breath. <laughs> Big fat and out of breath. Okay, so this is the main farmyard. And uh, if you remember before, there was three fields here. So... I got rid of the fields and I did my little grass trick and put down grass so you can put whatever you want. And uh, I usually put like uh, the cows here or the sheep over here, but you can put whatever you want. A large horse paddock or the large cows will fit here. And if you use place anywhere, you could put a large animal pen over here as well. And up here is kind of small, so you might want to put a small one. I have a barn that I converted, so I'm going to be putting one up there. There's two different colors. So there's going to be one here and one right over here. And then over here, I think this was field 11. I got rid of that, and I, I dug in and got rid of the hill and leveled this all out so I can put some other stuff over here. I'm big on storage. <laughs> if anybody's seen any of my videos, if you can remember them... Um, I have a lot of placeables. <laughs> so
So I like storage. And a handy little tip for you. Most of you probably already know this, but there may be some people that are just starting to play that don't. Um, this is, has a water trigger attached to it. So you can fill up uh, your water wagon there. And I nabbed the little water pump from up in the mountains and I put that down and behind there. Big whoop. But then down over here, if you back up just until your trailer is about to this tree, um, you can fill up your water tanker here from the pond. You can go in as far as you want to, but you only have to go as far as that little tree marker. And then if we take a stroll up the pathway here, now you can get to this from that road that goes in back there. I'll show you, but um, you'll see it better in game. You can come up. There's two roads here, one that forks up there, one that comes over here. Those were already here. But once you get back here, I had a little rearrange over here. So this hut was already here, all this junk. I just pushed it all back and kind of arranged it a little bit better. And then I made this area up here. So you can, uh, I, I put a chicken coop up here. I put the small one. You can fit the large one, but it's kind of hard. You'd only be able to get around one side. So the small one, you can get around all sides. So you can put something up there like that. And when you come back in the morning, all your chickens will be dead because the wolves will probably eat them overnight. <laughs> okay. And then we come down this little road. Probably making everybody motion sick. Let's see. Let's go up this way. And we're back to our radio tower. But see, now I made this road a little more civilized. It's still a little steep, but not like before. It was like a plummet straight down. And... Um, you can come down the other side. And this is the side I go up and down when I come up here. Um, the other side is pretty good, but it's still a little bit uh, precarious. <laughs> so, and I didn't feel like fooling around with all this over here. So I did some leveling, but yeah, it really didn't amount to a hill of beans. And then I'll show you back over here. And I'll probably make some more changes um, before... I do anything with it. And this is pretty much why I've been holding off this series is there was some things I wanted to do with this and I wanted to convert this to the mod map because I wanted that flexibility of being able to change with my episodes. So this area over here. So this before, if you're familiar with the map, if you play on it, um, this was all kind of very hilly and mountainous over here. So I took all that away, leveled it out nice put some rocks in and now you have a, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what I did here. Um, so I made a little path to just kind of give you a visual cue that you can fill up your water trailer here and you come in through here and you have this whole entire area to do whatever you want with. So I hope you like that. And this area over here was pretty much already here, but I just kind of leveled it out more. Um, that way you don't have to do much with the terrain raising and lowering and costing you money and all that. And then I kind of gave a visual cue of two entrances and those are under the grass. So when you put your buildings down and then you have your little dirt roads going through here, um, you can continue these on or you can paint them over whatever you like. And then last but not least, so this is something I did uh, just for fun. Um, I'm going to call it, I'm going to make a sign for it. I'm going to call it the Hotel California. <laughs> but I made kind of a, a little luxury resort here. I nabbed the walls from the mission up on the hill and the gates off of the horse training corral there. <laughs> um, and then you just come down here. Now, all this didn't exist before. This was like a sheer drop off to the water. So uh, it took a little bit of time to do it, but it was a lot of fun. And then I grabbed the lights off of the pier <laughs> and I made this uh, little place here. So if you come in over here, you got the mansion. Now, what I will say about this is I took the mansion off of Estancia La Pacho and I converted it into a placeable mod. This one is, um, I, I imported this through Giants Editor. So this is a static one. So it does not have the sleep function. I didn't want it. But um, if you play this map, if you'd like it, when I give it out, um, you can go into GE, just delete this one and then, um, and you'll delete the flower pots as well, or push them out of the way. 
and then uh, you can place down the placeable version that I made. And you'll have to use place anywhere because um, the mod will kind of tell you you can't place it because of this stuff. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, let's see, around the side here. So if anybody is as old as me or older, and um, you know what the reference is to this here, the way that I positioned these palm trees. It's from an old movie. I think it was back in the 60s. And I'll give you one hint. The name Culpepper. Farmer Boy Dylan, how are you, my friend? I'm sorry, I'm just yapping away over here. <laughs> so if you can tell me what movie this is from, what I will do for you, if you would like, is on this little stone over here, I'll, I'll make a bronze plaque in Photoshop and I'll put your name on it. <laughs> so, or whatever name you want, just keep it clean. So, yeah, so I made a little bridge and a little, like a little moat, little pond with this little thing in the middle of it, just to be quirky. But, um, and then, like I said, this was all beach down here. So, took a bit of, took a bit of doing. And then over here, I did this for my, my wife, um, a little, uh, little tent. We can have a romantic dinner in and listen to the radio and we can watch the sun go down over the ocean there. I try to do a little something for her every time. And then over here would be, um, the maintenance, uh, housing. So, uh, they'll live on site. In real life, if I, the only way I'd get into this place is to be able to live here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So when Doug Surly's done staying at the, uh, the luxurious hotel bed and breakfast here, the Airbnb, um, I'd have to come in and change his sheets and wash his toilet. So yeah, <laughs> but at least I have a nice parking space. And then uh, I grabbed the dolphin from the old mission as well. And I grabbed all, all kind of things from around town and just put it in here to make a little feature. And uh, little hanging pots there, whatever. I know you're not interested in that, but uh, that's me. Who else do we got here? I'm seeing things pop up. Hey, Mr. Castle, Darren, hello. How are you, my friend? And Virtual Games Group. Hello to you. Thank you very much. Uh, one and all for coming to the stream. I appreciate it. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. So now I am not a modder whatsoever. Like I said before, I'm just a, a, uh, a tinkerer, if you will. So I learn how to fix things by breaking them. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm a little bit stubborn, so I don't, um, I like to try to figure things out on my own. And for some reason that kind of helps them stick in my head, but, um, it probably takes three times as long, but that's just kind of the way I am. And the second reason is, you know, I do have some friends that are into modding and, uh, you know, I don't like to message them every time I have a mod question. You know, I like to message them to say, hello, how are you? Because Hey, they're people too. And, um, they're my good friends. And, uh, I enjoy talking to them. So I try to ask them as little as possible, but, um, I did have a couple of questions for my friend, uh, CCS 101 and for bullet bill this week. So, uh, thank you very much gentlemen for that. Now on this map, I don't think I did it yet. Let me see. I have two versions of the map I'm going to be putting out. One is my modded version. And then the second one, it's called, um, Ravenport vanilla. And uh, that's just going to be the straight up map. Just, you know, the way it is converted over minus the trash. <laughs> you getting my drift yet? Really pissed off about the trash. Well, thank you very much, farmer man. I appreciate it. Some nice tinkering. Thank you very much. Now, let me see what else I can show you whilst I'm here. I know I've done some other things here, but I just can't remember off the top of my head because I've been fooling around with this for the better part of four days. <laughs> but uh, 
I'm sure it'll come to my head once we go into game. Now, I was going to change the vehicle reset point and put them down at the main farm, but because we can kind of make our own farm, that could be a little inconvenient for people because if I put it where I think the main farm is, that may not be where you made yours, and then you're going to reset it across the map and be mad at me. So I'm going to leave it here, but you can change it yourself if you come into GE. And, well, first of all, here's your career start point. So if you click on that, you'll get the little um, gizmo that pops up. And a lot of people probably already know this, but uh, I had it here because I was doing something. But the blue arrow is the way that you'll be facing when you come into the map. So just know that. And I always use um, the control B function. So once you highlight that, if I hit control B on my keyboard and let it go, and then I just click somewhere else, and it'll put it there at perfect ground level. So you won't be under the map, over the map, <laughs> or anywhere else. You'll be right how you should be. So it puts you totally um, where you should be on the map. Okay, so let's see. Let's bring it back. And we'll put it right about here. And then you can adjust it how you want to have yourself looking when you come into the map. And just, just don't do the up and down. You can do side to side and back and forth. Okay, so. Here's all your fields. If you delete a field and you want to make the numbers go back in sequence, you can do that in here. There's all your field numbers. And then in gameplay... This is, um, you'll see vehicle shop markers. And this is where, um, let me get back over there. This is where your um, reset is. So now you're going to have to, let's see. Yeah, place, place start, place end. So it makes like a little box. You'll see two gizmos pop up for each. One on the left, one on the right, obviously. And you can buy a lot more equipment in the game now. And it'll materialize I think up to two or three rows so vehicle shop spawn right there okay so this is where you can change your reset point in here and you'll have to play with it because I don't know which one is the reset um, I haven't messed with it yet so it was easier in 17 and 15 than it is with this one So, I'm sorry, I was just reading you guys' messages here. I can get lost in my blabber. All right, so what I'm going to do with this is, um, I've already saved it. So, I wanted to zip it up and go in and test it because that little bridge that you saw with those funky palm trees, I forgot to put a collision <laughs> in the bridge, so I walked right in through it under the water. So, I wanted to test that and a few other things. And I can bring you along with me if you like. And I also have to do something, um, let's see, I'm looking for the folder as I'm talking here. <clears throat> Excuse me, choking on my own spit. <laughs> okay, let me make sure that I have it in here. So, I've been adding some uh, new ad strips onto the barns that I converted. So, I wanted to uh, put one more on there, but I have to... Let's see where I put it. Here it is. So I have to design one in Photoshop. So I nabbed a picture of a gun that I wanted offline. Um, I mean on Google. And then I was going to make the sign myself just so I can control the size a bit better. So I've made an, um, an ad strip pack of my own. I created the i3D file and um, I made a selection of sizes. I'm going to give that to you guys as well at some point. Um, so you can put out ad strips too. I'm going to make a tutorial on it so you'll know how to do it. And, um, you'll be able to import ad strips into Giants Editor and put them on your favorite vehicles or buildings or whatever you want. Hey, 
Hey, Nathan, thank you very much. Let me look at that. I didn't, I didn't see load places. Let me switch my glasses, first of all. Got to put on my computer reading glasses. Maybe things won't be so blurry and I can see. There we go. Yeah, so I see store, store place, vehicle trigger. Let's look in here. Yeah, load place has got to be in a different spot. I remember, at least I remembered in 17 when I was fooling around with Goldcrest, it was in gameplay. Load places, so it's probably somewhere down here in the abyss. Animal loading triggers, transport missions, placeholders, what can that be? I wish you can just search for the word. Yeah, exactly, Farmer Klein. And welcome to the stream, by the way. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was a little search feature in there. Hey, Maverick, welcome to the stream, my friend. Chicken coop from Walt Disney Studios. <laughs> Jonathan Mayberry, welcome, my friend. You haven't missed anything at all, trust me. People are probably slapping their own faces to stay awake. <laughs> you haven't missed a darn thing. But, um, yeah, then there's 20 million palm trees in here. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I have to say um, I haven't found that category, load places, but I haven't really dug in deep to look. So as soon as I find it in, in the next live stream or something, I'll, uh, I'll give you an update and let you know. Unless somebody can push my face directly on the screen where it is. Farm Temple. That's nice, huh? That's the mission up there on the hill. Okay. So I'm going to get out of that. Um, not going to look at that right now. So what I wanted to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create this sign while we're here with you guys. And uh, what did I have? I'm going to use my... 5 by 12 so I made little templates for you guys so you don't have to size them yourself you could just open it and you save it as something else obviously so you don't lose your template so And these, of course, will work in whatever photo editor you're, you're using. I notice a lot of people like um, GIMP or um, what's that other one now? I always know it, and all of a sudden now I forgot it, but the other free one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just start out with a basic shape. I'm going to do a rounded rectangle. And a lot of the graphics that I use in game, unless like some of the obvious ones that you've seen on my video, but most of the stuff I make myself... So I think that radius looks like it would make a nice sign. And the fill color, I'm going to give it that nice goldenrod yellow. Maybe a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit more on the orange side. Let's try that. That ought to do her. And then we'll do another one without a um, without a uh, fill in it so we'll do the same thing no fill I don't know why that disappeared but we'll find out in a second won't we okay and then Let's do color overlay on this one, just so we have the flexibility. And I should have saved that color in my swatches, but it's easy enough to make again. That's what you do when you're an idiot. Nope. So let's start with this one. Go a little bit more that way. 
There we go. Now add the swatches. Good enough. Okay. And now with this one, I just want to put an inside stroke. And that's probably okay-ish. Maybe something like that. And then kind of make our sign border. That looks about right. And then we'll go ahead and we'll drag our gun in there. This is a sign for Duck Zorley. It says, keep off the grass. <laughs> Who else do we got in here? Okay. So I think I'm going to reverse that image. So we'll transform. Flip horizontal. And then we'll get our text going and we'll be finished with this little ditty here. And I don't think I want this one. <laughs> Semi bold. There we go. Oh, and not 200 point. <laughs> we'll start with 48. See what that looks. We'll just adjust that. speed like maybe there we'll have to arrange the gun in a moment but oh god I can't type today starting to look about what I wanted to do with it. <laughs> and this is going to go on my barn. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file first of all. Wireless gun sign. And then I always save a PNG copy. And then the DDS, finally. And DDS. And it's going to replace this one. That I have on... This is another little thing I have on the barn. Yes, I do want to replace it. 
And there we go. Oh, let's see. Jim, Jim Aiken. Hi, Jim. Welcome to the stream. Let me look here. Did I guess the movie? Marwell Manor is being tested by giants as we speak. Not now, not long now, ladies. Okay. Thanks, Road Junction. But I'm a guy, just so you know, if you couldn't tell from my voice. <laughs> What time is it over here? It's 3.20 p.m. in the afternoon. Jim Aiken, that's right. It's a mad, mad, mad world. That's right. Ding, ding, ding. You got it, buddy. So if you want to, um, Mr. Aiken... You can uh, email me or you can private message me on Discord and you can tell me if um, you would like to have your name on the plaque on the map and if so, um, what you would like to have on that little plaque. What name? Okay, so back to this now. So we can get her done. Okay, so I got my files. Copy. Paste, and now I'll rename it. Oh my God. There we go. So now let's go in and we'll just place this one real quick since we're here and make sure it works. Hopefully it does. <laughs> there it is. Voila. So now you can uh, grab this. You'll see in the center of the gizmo, there's a little tiny white square. If you grab that, that's how you make it bigger or smaller without altering the proportions of it. And then if you want to stretch it or change the proportions, you use the little squares on the end of each of the gizmo arrows. Then it's fiddle faddle time. Time to try to get this to to act right. And I think right about cheer. Get it in a little bit closer. I think that's about as close as we're gonna get. Make sure it's not really floating off the side of the building. Nope. Okay, so that's the front. So I'm going to name this ad strip G1 for gun one. And then we'll duplicate it with control D. And then we'll want to name rename that one G2. And we'll just... Go ahead and spin this around. And let's see if we can do control B down here. And I think I'll put it on this here side. There we go. At least it gets it in the relative spot.
<laughs> oh, Curtis plays. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Doug Surly is going to be immortalized in this map. I have something special planned for my two good friends, Grizzly Bear Sims and Mr. Doug Surly, Esquire. He's going to have the Golden Duck Award. Now, another thing you can do, um, just to let you know while I'm here, if you pull this little handle here, this is going to make a curve in your ad strip. So if you wanted to put it on the side of a tank or something, you know, water tank or something like that, anything curved, you can control the degree of that curve by pulling this slider in and out here. And, or you can do it in the menu here as well. Um, it's the scale. I think it's Y. Let me see. Let me just, okay. It's Z. So scale Z. I just find it easier to, to manage it this way, but as you see, you can really make, you know, a quite severe curve. Now you don't want to go totally flat down to zero because then your ad strip will start to look funny. So you don't really want to go past, well, I've gone past one before, you know, lower than one, but this is the part that gets a little fiddly here. One second, guys. Let's try that. Yeah, it looks good. It's on the building. <laughs> okay. Voila. Done. So if you're wondering what the star dairy is here that I did, um, <laughs> you're probably not wondering, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So I made another ad strip here, and it was a Norman Rockwell picture for the dairy barn, and it said star dairy on there. So I decided to kind of carry that through. So that's what we got there. So our uh, our first barn is done. And we'll go ahead and save that. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Oh, that's good, Curtis. Yeah, it's a nice sign to hang up in your house, you know, in the front window. <laughs> Unless you hold Bible study on Sunday at your house, then it's eh, probably not a good sign to have up there. <laughs> Okay, so American Barn is done. So we'll go ahead and zip that up. Take that. Control X. Put it in done. Control V. So I won't do the red barn right now. I'll spare you guys that, but uh, we'll get to it another time. There we go. At least the white one's done. All right. So if anybody that's watching hasn't seen any of my tutorial videos, anytime I go to change a mod or work on it, even update it, I always make a copy. So, and then I, I keep the originals or your copy in a folder all by itself. So you don't mess that one up. And then I have my edited copies and, uh, that's kind of how I work to keep things in order. Okay. So yeah, so here's the Raven port that I'm modding. And then my, uh, the other version is, um, <laughs> I call it uh Raven port vanilla. <laughs> so just a standard map for you guys to tinker around with yourselves. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's zip this one up. Control a. There we go. Control X. Control V. What's going on here? Oh, it's still creating it. That's why. Yeah, if I had any more brains, I'd be dangerous. <laughs> 
Let's make sure that didn't screw up. Okay, so control X. Control V. Replace. And now I shall replace it in here. And there we go. Now we can open the game. Okay, Road Junction. Laters. Thanks for stopping by. All right. So now I'm just going to put up my uh, my Be Right Back screen for a second, just so I can go ahead and start up Steam. And no offense to all you guys, so the world doesn't see me typing in my passwords because I forgot to start it up. So I'll be right back with you. If you guys want, I can sing to you while you wait. <laughs> Not. <laughs> no, Mr. Zorley, I wasn't working quicker than the computer. I was just uh, <laughs> being my usual idiotic self. Okay, I think we're all set here. Wait for the screen to come back. Okay, there we go. So sorry about uh, if you seeing this before I do. I wait for. I know there's a de delay, but I want to make sure that you guys um, can see. So we're gonna do this one here. I didn't alter any terrain, so I shouldn't have to start a new game. Move my phone so I can see you guys. There we go. All right. So here we are. So when the, on my edited version, um, I'm not sure that's going to be an opinion. I'm going to poll uh, people and I can start with you guys. I don't know if I want to start with starting equipment. Because, I'm, I mean, the standard models, obviously, that Giants put in here, those ridiculous, useless barns and all that, will not be here. Um, let me turn the uh, in-game volume down a little bit. I don't know if you guys can hear it as clawingly as I can. But it's pretty loud. We'll do 40 for now and see how that goes. Okay. <clears throat> so one tip to anybody that's going to begin to start, you know, tinkering around with the map, you're going to think, look at it long and hard in Giants Editor from all angles. 
and then you're really going to have to come in game and look. Now you see, one thing that I forgot to address that I'll have to address, these dirt stains. Um, this is how Giants now um, adds layers of depth to um, a texture. It's unfortunate now, and this is one thing that my friend Bullet Bill was pretty mad about. Um, you can't use the airbrush, like the opacity settings and all that anymore to kind of, you know, meld the textures together and make, you know, subtle layers anymore. You know, it's like all or nothing. So what Giants has done is they've decided to use ad strips to add the other layers. So um, I think that's very unfortunate. But when I moved the terrain, I forgot to uh, <laughs> move some of the dirt stains. So I'll have to move those down or delete them all together. Um, but these look good here. This one's a little floaty, so I'll have to take care of that. But uh, this is one reason, like I say, why you really want to go in game and look at the map, even when you think you're 100% sure. Uh, and you can see the edges of this one. So I'm at a, at a stage of mind right now is where... I don't know if I'm just going to delete them, <laughs> you know, and the, say the heck with them uh, rather than use them. So I can leave you the standard equipment that, you know, Giants started you out with, which was this stuff. You know, hey, Giants, thanks. <laughs> right. And the Fiat and the little trailer. Or I can do no starting equipment and just bump up the money a bit and let you decide what you want to put. Because I think most people mm, and I, I love the the case tractors. This was by. um Matt XJX. This was the winner of the mod contest, and he made the official DLC for 17. The whole pack of those. I, I hope the rest of them come soon, but uh, yeah. I think um, he had the Massey 698 as well, so I, I'm really waiting to see that. And then I downloaded the uh, the larger version of the um, Valtra cow tractor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So for anybody new to the stream here, um, I did say that all the spaces that I've made in the yard, I covered with grass because you can edit out the grass in game without a problem, but you can't put it back unless you plow and sow it again. So I wanted to make it easy for you. So once you put a building down, you can remove as much grass or as little grass as you like. Okay. So let's go down to our other place here. Well, actually first, let me place my barn and see what that looks like. We really want to make sure those ad strips shown up. So uh, let's see, it should be under sheds. American Barn. So here's the two versions I did. There's a nice weathered kind of red one, and then I did a, a weathered looking white one. And it's only going to cost you a dollar. <laughs> All right, so I like to have it this way. Maybe right about here. A little working room around there. I just want to check the terrain height because I don't want some big lump in the ground here. Probably going to wind up with it anyway, but we shall see. And right about here, voila. Oh, you know what? My ad strips are not going to show up because I didn't put them in the transform group with the barn like an idiot. But that's easy enough to fix. I can take care of that. At least the other ad strips showed up. So, but that one, of course, the only one I did on cam didn't work, but it's an easy fix. And that one looks good. And that looks good. So, yeah, I'll work that out. I wonder if it threw an error. Nope. So that's good. No errors. But, uh, yeah, so this is the, um, as you may have noticed, this is the barn from uh, Westbridge Hills all the way back from well, I think this was on the farm in FS13 as well. So they've been kind of carrying that model around for a while. and um, But I converted it over to 19, and I retextured it and put a new roof on it. And um, I, if you wanted to use these as bale barns, I didn't want to... Ooh, oh, that's the shadow. Okay, I thought it was a little crooked. Um, I didn't want the, the, the bale sale trigger to sell you bales once you stack them up. So I put that up in the loft. <laughs> So you can use a telehandler or something, and if you throw a bale just up past those boards, it'll sell. I didn't want to delete the sale trigger because sometimes that can throw errors. Then you got to go through and delete the script. So I just put it upstairs, and uh, you can 
sell bales to your heart content up there. All right. So it looks good. So let's see here. GS. Toggle. Flight. And. No. HUD. Mode. There we go. What do you mean command not found? GS. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, I put hub. <laughs> Believe me, when there's a problem, it's always a Eustace problem. There we go. So I'm going to try that. Uh, I'll put down a, I'll put down an animal pen in one of these areas just to show you. It may as well do up here. And we'll do the small chicken coop because that works out better up there. Now here's another handy tip. You'll notice when after you access the placeable menu, it'll kind of bring you back to where you were previously standing. But if you hit the space bar on your keyboard, it'll jump you to where you are. Easy as that. And you can jump all over the place. <laughs> all right. Oh, I don't own the land. Oh, that's right. It's a new game. Hold on a second. Got $10 million. So let's see. GS. Buy all farmlands. There we go. Now, let's get down to business, shall we? There we go. Doesn't take much to make a fool out of me on a live stream, so I, <laughs> I certainly don't need any help from the game. <laughs> All right, so I know there's the feeding triggers on the left and the front is where the eggs come out, so we want to make sure we have plenty of room for that, but yet room to drive around. And let's see. Bring it up a bit. There we go. All right. And I did mention this in my video with Mr. Sealy P, but if some of you don't know, um, you can adjust the brush strength, and that works in the terrain leveling as well. So if you, um, let's see, let me remember which one it is here. So it should be Control and Q and E. So if you look at the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see the little number go up for the brush strength. It doesn't do anything that I've seen as far as making the, the paint less um, hard, if you will, or soft, but it works very well with terrain editing. So if you're trying to make like a subtle incline, a gradual incline, um, that's a very handy tool to use. And I usually use it on 0.4 to 0.6 when I'm doing a hill because you make gradual little steps and then you smooth it down and it works out very well. Okay, so let's see. So we're going to do just a quick little demonstration. Let's get some, some dirt. Let's see what kind of dirt they're using here. Oh, okay. They're using like that wet dirt, but I'm not going to use that. And we don't have to do, you know... There we go. Over here, I don't want to take out too much grass. But we want to give yourself a little turning room for your little tractor and trailer there. And you can do nice little things too afterwards, like, uh, you know, I have some placeable trees. And what's nice about these trees is they don't show up in your garage menu. So if you put down a whole bunch of trees... There, you don't have to scroll through a million trees um, later on to find something else that you're looking for. So once you place it down, you, you got to uh, cut it down if you want to get rid of it. And I don't mind that at all. But I also have some placeable bushes that, well, I have to fix because they have an error. But, um, but they show up in the menu, so that's unfortunate. 
But what I hear is, I don't know if it's going to be in the next day update. I hope it is because Giants doesn't do too many updates. <laughs> um, my little dig there. But um, they're supposed to give us the ability to to paint the bushes because that's how you put these bushes in in Giants Editor. You paint them in. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to give us that in game to use. That'll be nice. And uh, you'll be good to go. And then if they can do the bushes, well, hopefully we'll be able to paint in grass as well. Grass and weeds. Because who doesn't like some weeds? All right, so let's just do this. And like I say, usually I would, you know, spend a lot of time playing around with this, but I'm just doing it quick just to kind of give you an idea, which you guys probably don't even want the idea, but I'm one of those compulsive people. <laughs> there we go. And then we'll just tab through and get our our dry grass texture. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, we can't finish painting in painting in grass on the top of this here, but you can get you know a little something going, kind of around the edges, make it look like you drove up on the grass, make it look like Zerly's been here. Get down a little bit more there. And you can really spend a lot of time on this and make it look really nice. All right. And then... Placeables. I think it's in miscellaneous. That's what I get for thinking it's not. They're in decoration. So let's see. I'm going to use the biggins. Because it can get hot up here in the summertime. We don't want fried chicken up here. <laughs> fried chicken in the pen, that is. So let's see. Can we fit another tree any place? Now, with the Place Anywhere mod, when seeing that I have that, you can place inside the pen, whereas we couldn't do that before. But uh, as long as it doesn't bother you that the chickens will be walking through the tree. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to look for... Hopefully this won't become a nuisance put it right there and also another great thing about this place anywhere mod is um, you can paint under things that you normally couldn't do without that mod in place like areas where the little ridicule will turn red and giant says oh you can't do that you can do it <laughs> so pretty cool and maybe another one over here it's very easy for me to get tree frenzy, so I have to try to control myself. I think we'll leave it at that for now, and I'll come back and play with it off cam, because that's what I do. There we are. Yeah, so this is... Let's see, let's go down here. This is a little bit on the steep side, but that's okay, I like it. And then I can refine it later. Okay, so let's go test that bridge out. Now let's see if I have a hot spot near there so I don't have to fly all the way over there. Yeah, we could probably go. What would be closer? Probably the sawmill. Oh, actually, no, the train might not be going over there. Let's just do this. By the time I figure out what I want to do, I could have been there five times. Let me just check my chat here whilst I'm running. I'll try to... Oh, yeah, no problem, uh, Zorli. I'll, uh, I'll uh, send you the link on Discord. And um, I'm going to post um, I'm gonna post it down in the description as well. But uh, you won't have to wait. I'll sure share it out to you in Discord as well. And Mr. Jimmy J, welcome, my friend. I'm sorry I didn't see you. As usual, I'm running my mouth, but I'm happy to see you. And uh, also welcome um, Adrian, my good friend Adrian Binstead. Great to see you, my friend. We got Raznak. Great to see you. And Nathan6930, awesome. Thank you so much. James Van Huren, thank you very much. Man, it's great to see you guys. Like I said, I hope I'm not boring you too much. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I can spend, you know, I can spend the period of an entire day doing this, but I do it in chunks of an hour or two. But uh, sometimes it's nice just to have some company.
and kind of show you work off to somebody other than Duck Zorley. Because they'll just look at it and say, eh, it's all right. They don't like it, but it's all right. <laughs> now, now, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm just playing around. Um, he's he's one of my, my best friends, and uh, he's a great guy. And we have a very odd um, type of friendship. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So the moment of truth, guys. Let's see if I got this right. If not, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. So my original bridge, I nabbed a piece of the pier decking off of the pier over there, and it didn't work. So um, drop straight through. Now let me make sure I'm not running here. Yep, see, I was flying. Ah. And there we go. Success. So this is a piece of fencing off of the main farm. <laughs> and then I nabbed these railings off of the, uh, down near that horse training center. So, yeah. Awesome. Did, did my hanging pots show up? Yep. So those are looking good. It's the little things in life that please me. There we go. So this over here, if you guys walk into the map, um, <laughs> you might find this bizarre, but I took a beach umbrella and made a solar shade. Um, where I live out here in Nevada, it's, um, and even California, it's very common to see these gigantic solar shades uh, stretched across um, spaces. And there's actually a big, um, in Summerlin, Nevada, there's actually a very big, like a outdoor mall, but it's under one of these massive solar shades. Um, it's like a solar shade tent, kind of like you see on the top of Colorado International Airport. It looks just like that. They copycatted it. So, uh, yeah, put a little beach chair out there for my wife. Of course, put her flip-flops out for her. Okay, so everything's looking good. No errors. Good deal. Awesome. Now, as I said to anybody coming late into the stream... This house I put in via G, uh, Giants Editor, but I have a placeable mod that I converted as well. I made this into a placeable. So if you use the Place Anywhere mod and you use my placeable mansion, you can go into GE and delete this one and you'll be able to put the other one down right in this place and you can use this um, for sleeping as well. But uh, I didn't want it for this for my purposes, but I'm going to give that as an option for those of you that would like that. And here's Duck Zorley's quarters. <laughs> yep, here's your mop in your bucket out here, Zorley. So uh, I spilled some coffee on the floor in there, so get right on that, will you? We got company coming. Smiles, smiles, everyone. Tattoo, play the music. <laughs> Welcome to Fantasy EP. Right, let me stop. So I think... That's about it that I've done in here. Let's go take a quick flight. And I, I I, just retouched this up a little bit. Not that any of you guys care, but I didn't like the dirt ring around it and what it had in the middle, so I put a little asphalt down and a concrete walkway. But um, I like that old whale skeleton. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And I tried to adapt things as easily as possible without taking up too many fields, you know, without sacrificing fields for placeable items. So uh, these fields out here are very large, so I wanted to make sure that I I didn't get into using those because um, I think people will get a little mad at me. I mean, it's your choice. If you want to do it yourself, that's fine. But, uh, okay, and this looks good. Nice. So look at this, Zorley. It's a nice little patch of grass to, to mow. Get you. I don't know if this is big enough for a big M. I'm sure you'll cram it in here if you can, but uh, not big M appropriate, but it can, it can be done. There we go. And make sure the train still works, because I forgot to put that in the script. And uh, I was like, hey, where's my train? <laughs> nice. All is well that ends well with that. Well, let's take a look at the chat while we're taking a train ride here. Uh, looks better from the outside. It's nice to be on this side of the gate. <laughs> I usually get plowed by this train every time I go across the tracks. Let's see. Evening EP just noticed that 
you're live. I couldn't miss this. Well, thank you very much. You know, and I really do appreciate all of you coming to this. I know that some of you live in parts of the world where it's kind of getting on to your bedtime or your dinner time. And uh, I really appreciate you taking time out. How you doing, Adam? Adam Powell, welcome to the stream, my friend. I really appreciate you coming in. Let's see what Raznek said down here. We folks gotta run. The challenge with Farmer Klein consumes me. <laughs> Have a good night. Okay, no problem. Enjoy. Have fun. All right. Oh, Mrs. Farmer had snuck in here. She's probably not watching now, but she's on her way home. <laughs> oh, darn, I missed her. But that's what happens when I'm running my mouth. I really gotta... I don't use... Um, what do you call? Oh, God, my memory is so mush today. But I use in, uh, the NVIDIA SharePlay to do my live streaming. I don't use OBS, uh, but because it OBS really hits your frame rates, whereas NVIDIA recording and sh live streaming does nothing to your FPS. So, uh, but the, the, the exchange with that is I can't have the chat going up on screen. They don't have that function. So uh, I might have to give OBS a try regardless because, uh, you know, looking down at the phone all the time, you know, it kind of sucks because <laughs> I miss out on a lot of what you guys say, and I don't want to do that. So, okay, let's get out of the train. There we go. So, yeah, so I'll fix my little ad strip deal there. That'll be no problem. And, uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it here, guys. I think I've held you hostage long enough. And again, thank you very much for uh, stopping by. I really appreciate it. And I hope you maybe even learned a minor thing or two and got some enjoyment out of it. So thanks again. And uh, talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.